Hey guys, welcome back to Frontline Football. And today, I got a little NFL news to share. So as you know, or maybe not know, the NFL has some international marketing stuff. And I'm going to give some awards out. So for London, you get an F because you got stuck with the Jets and the Jaguars again. So enjoy them forever. And then the Rams get the most creative reward award for going to Australia and China. And then to close out the intro, I'm going to do my best Urban Meyer impression and kick this water bottle. All right, roll the intro. Frontline football. I'm Zach. We're going to start out with the Kansas City Chiefs versus the uh, Chargers. It's going to be Thursday night. It's going to be a good matchup. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. I'm going to go Chiefs here, mainly because I think the Chargers won the last matchup, and the Chiefs are pretty much the second. One of the hottest teams in football, probably right behind New England. They found a stride lately. and Well, LA's also found a similar stride. They were actually both won in pretty impressive, impressive fa fashion against inferior opponents. But I ultimately think the Chiefs will get it done here on the road in Thursday Night Football, and they will solidify their division lead. What are your thoughts, Zach? I have Chargers here. I like this Chargers team a lot more than this Chiefs team. The Chiefs played really inconsistent football in the like, beginning weeks. They started to pick it up lately. But I think that this Chargers team is just going to be playing better than uh, the Chiefs will uh, this Thursday night. Josh? Oh. My bike. Uh... I have the Kansas City Chiefs winning two words. All right, no, three words. Las Vegas Raiders. If you saw that game, it was bad. I tuned in for a little bit of it, and I tuned right back out of it. It was not a good game. So the Chiefs are going to be winning this game. They just look better than Los Angeles at this point in the season, and I think that the Chiefs are probably going to – Show off the AFC again for the third year in a row in the Super Bowl. So give me the Chiefs winning here. All right, our next matchup, Josh just mentioned it. Uh, it's going to be the Vegas Raiders versus the Cleveland Browns. Josh. I have the... I got to have the Cleveland Browns here. The Raiders, just what are you doing? You step on teams' logos and you get blown out by them. You can't find your identity. I mean, at some point, the blame just has to go on y'all. Y'all keep shooting yourselves in the foot every single time that y'all are out on a football field. So I don't really get what the heck y'all are doing this season. So the Browns at least have some level. I mean, it's inconsistent, but they have a goal. So give me the Cleveland Browns winning this game here. Jack? I have to go with the Raiders. This is surprising. For me, because I'm not the biggest Raiders fan, but mainly because the Browns have 19 total people on the COVID list. Half their roster includes Kevin Stefanski, the running back coach, Baker Mayfield, Jarvis Landry, Austin Hooper, David Njoku, Dredgick Wilt, Wyatt Teller, and a lot more important people to their team. So basically their entire offense is going to be out. It's just going to be Case Keenum and Nick Chubb giving it, them all, giving it their all on Saturday. I guess some could come back if they get negative tests, but they had a pretty big COVID outbreak. I'm kind of surprised this game is still going to happen in the first place, but if the Raiders can't beat the Browns, missing half their roster, then it would be, to be honest, the most Raiders thing to happen to close out the year. But we'll see as things happen. Maybe Browns will get more, less covid -y as the week goes on, but they play in three days now. They're going to play on Saturday, and that 19 people got placed on the list this morning. So we'll see what happens. I'm going to take the Raiders. And, yeah, Raiders. What are your thoughts, Zach? I also have the Raiders here. Um, Yeah, that COVID list is so big that, like, it probably, that the names could probably reach uh, across my room. So, yeah, and also the Browns don't have a head coach, which is, we've seen this story before, but it was with the Steelers. But I think that the Raiders will overcome having... No head coach. Well, the Browns won't be able to overcome having no head coach. And, yeah, I think this the Raiders team needs a bounce back after the Chiefs game. So, who's best in the Cleveland Browns? So, yeah. 
All right, our next matchup is the excuse me for that. Uh, New England Patriots versus the Indianapolis Colts. Check. This one is close for me because both of these teams are on ridiculous streaks as of late. Both have played incredibly well. Both are coming off bye weeks, and both have a hot running game led by a pretty good quarterback. But the tiebreaker for me here is going to be home field advantage, pretty much. I think the Colts are going to step it up on defense this week. I think Jonathan Taylor is going to have another great game against New England. I think he's going to take them over the top and get a big win in Indianapolis Saturday night. What are your thoughts, Josh? I feel like with this game, the big factor is going to be the rushing attack. Because while I do believe that Mac Jones may win O'Roy if he shows it off to either him or Jamar Chase at this point. So those two are really locked into battle right now. Both of them didn't really have a, a good showing two weeks ago with Mac Jones only throwing for 19 yards. Of course, he got the 19 yards in our game, which that's not rookie of the year numbers. And Jamar Chase, you know, bobbled a interception to the defenders. Both of them generally have good weeks. This is going to be their bounce back. And I believe that the Colts' rushing attack is just a little bit better. While the Patriots were able to dominate the Bills, whoop de doo so were the Colts. The Colts were able to do that with Jonathan Taylor only, and not just a bunch of different running backs. So give me the Indianapolis Colts here. Zach? I'm going to be sweeping on Colts here because I also have the Colts winning. I think that the only thing that the Patriots need to do is stop Jonathan Taylor, but uh, how do you stop, stop a wrecking ball like that? Um, answer that you don't because Jonathan Taylor has ran over a lot of great defenses already, and New England's just going to be one of them. Now, say if Bill Belichick can stop this uh Jonathan Taylor led offense with his defense be very concerned about this Patriots team coming into playoffs because they just picked it up now and they are if they get the win here they have the first seed basically locked up because no one else is pretty much competing anymore so yeah all right our next matchup is the New York Jets versus the Miami Dolphins Jack I have to go with the Dolphins here. One, they're another ridiculously hot team right now in football with a massive win streak going. They're up to six in a row. They have a bye week. They're at home. Not to mention the Jets defense still can't stop the run. I got to watch it live. They could not stop the run. Taysom Hill and Kamara had pretty good games on the ground. Not to mention the Jets are still incredibly undermanned offensively. While they do get Michael Carter and maybe Tevin Coleman back, Zach Wilson is still throwing to a bunch of kindergartners at wide receiver, and there's pretty much no one left on this roster to do anything about it. So I have to go with the Dolphins here. I have very little faith right now that the Jets will be able to win a game with their wide receiver core. What are your thoughts, Josh? I have to go with what Jack's saying and go with the Dolphins. Even the Jack curse helped the Jets here. A bunch of superstitions could not even help the Jets get a win this year. They only got like two wins so far and two or three wins. It has been good for them this season. And the Dolphins at this point are trying to make their late season push. So they're trying to win every single game that they can. And I don't believe that the Jets are in any type of fighting mood to even come close to beating the Dolphins. So I got the Dolphins here. Zach? I got the Dolphins here because, uh, yeah, their rushing game is just going to run all over Jets. And I would recommend for fantasy owners, especially during this playoff time, probably start Miles Gaskins this week because he is going to be lethal in this game. There's no one that's probably going to be able to stop him because if the Jets thought that Taysom Hill and Alvin Kamara was bad, they are in for a, like, I don't know, they're just in for a bad day. Let's just say that. So, yeah. All right. Our next matchup is the Houston Texans versus the Jacksonville Jaguars. Josh. I got to go with the Houston Texans here. As you can see from the intro, uh, Urban Meyer is now in very hard for a 
Shocker, Urban Meyer and Florida don't make. Where'd you figure this out? The University of Florida or is it in Jacksonville? Doesn't matter. He is a terrible head coach with a terrible past and just terrible actions done on and off the field. I mean, that organization is so much of a dumpster fire. It makes the city of Jacksonville look like Los Angeles compared to the team's state. So I'm sorry about my rant with the Jaguars. I think the Texans. Cully may not be the smartest head coach, but at least he players with some kind of decency and doesn't try to kick them in the leg while they are at pregame. So, yeah. The Jags are not winning this year. They are getting one of the top picks. And the NFLPA is going to tell their free agents not to go to Jacksonville again. This is just Tom Coughlin without the wins right now. That's basically what the Urban Meyer hire is. So give me the Jacksonville Jaguars. Zach? Yeah, this is the worst era in Jacksonville, which was weird because that was supposed to be the Coughlin era, but it's actually the Meyer era. And it's weird because they have this franchise quarterback here in Trevor Lawrence, and they're ruining his career by literally just doing what the Jags usually do, which is hire horrible head coaches with Coughlin, Peterson, and Meyer now. And Meyer's probably the worst out of those guys. I don't understand how that's the thing, but sure. And yeah, he's probably going to get fired in a couple few weeks because this is not even the worst thing he has done. This is not even top three, so there's a problem here. So maybe they should fire him if they if they lose to the Texans. I believe that they should fire him, and then Obermeyer can go grind women at bars. Okay, so yeah. All right, Jack. I also have to go with the Texans here. Now, as Josh and Zach said, Urban Meyer is just a total disaster. He's always up to something new, and he likes to one up himself. And he's got, like, already 10 to 15 dumb moments in Jacksonville. And another thing is, the Jags don't really score points, like, at all. Like, don't get me wrong, the Texans aren't very good at scoring points either, but, like, they both got blown out, but the Texans scored some points. The Jags didn't score any points. And overall, the Jags, they're just, they don't do much on offense. Even in their win against the Bills, that was not an offensive explosion. It was a defensive stand. And ultimately, Houston's going to do enough to get the job done here. All right, our next matchup is the Tennessee Titans versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. Josh? I have to go with the Tennessee Titans because of one reason, playoffs. The Steelers are not going to be attending the playoffs. After what Chase Claypool did on Thursday Night Football for the entire world to watch, where he decided to celebrate and then blame his linemen because his linemen was actually trying winning them the game by handing the ball to the ref so then it could be set. And just the Steelers right now are just such a dumpster fire. It is tragic to see them like this. But it's also good because, you know, Steelers fans. But this is just sad. You are wasting TJ Watt's career. And there are just so many good young stars on that team, like Najee, TJ Watt, Devin Bush. I mean, Devin Bush, he even... I don't know what happened to Devin Bush. Mika, there are so many people on this team that are just so good whose careers are being wasted because of dumb actions by the coaching staff and some of just the players like Claypool. So this is just a bad week. And the Titans, I mean, they might not have a running attack anymore, but at least they have, like, Dante. Locker room cohesion. The Steelers are just weird. They haven't been doing much, so give me the Tennessee Titans here. Jack? I'm also going to have to go with the Titans. Well, I've, I had a feeling that Steelers could potentially win this game because they did keep it close with the Vikings. This is the perfect opportunity for the Steelers to let me down if I picked them, and I'm not going to give them the opportunity to do that. They're inconsistent. They're not very well run necessarily. They've done an okay job constructing the roster, but Chase Claypool... Not a lot of situational awareness there. Defense is still a little banged up. Titans are getting healthier coming off a big shut off, shut, shutout against the Jaguars. And I think ultimately, maybe Julio Jones has an okay game since I think he's finally back from IR. 
I think the Titans can get the job done here in Pittsburgh. The Steelers will disappoint, dropping yet another game. What are your thoughts, Zach? I have the Steelers here. Like you guys said about that, their organization, I believe in that too. But their players are so good, like Najee Harris and all of them. I think that they're going to have an easier time than Jacksonville. Because that Jacksonville game, Urban Meyer probably wasn't actually trying. Well, if he was trying to coach them, there's a problem there. But um, the thing is, uh, this uh, Steelers team is a really special team. It has a lot of talent. And just need a good coach to actually like use this talent and get better and stop having so many toxic wide receivers because this is the third one out of all of them because there was A B, who was just a mess, then it was Juju, and now it's Chase Claypool. Like all of these guys are just cocky. I understand that Chase Claypool was cocky in college, but God, he needs to stop. Like, I I still believe in the Steelers team to beat this Titans team because Steelers have a lot more talent on this team than the Titans do right now. If Henry was here, it would be a different story. But, yeah, Steelers. All right, our next team is the Cincinnati Bengals versus the Denver Broncos. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. I'm going with the Bengals here. Now, Broncos, I understand we had a temporary truce because you were playing the Lions. That's a team that you should have won easily, and you did. But it's on again. I'm not picking you anymore unless you play a really, really bad team, like bottom three pick or top three pick kind of thing. I understand the Bengals lost, but once again, they just missed out on opportunities. I think they had a couple muff punts, I think, in that 49ers game. They were able to push back in it, get to overtime. Joe Mixon was a little off. I think he'll be able to get back on track this game. I think the Bengals will also get back on track this game and keep up in the AFC North, getting the win in Denver and beating the frauds. What are your thoughts, Zach? And the Bengals beating them. I Like Jack said, they had like a really bad game against the Chargers. I mean, the Chargers are one of the best teams in the AFC right now, and the Bengals are too. And this Broncos team just beat the Lions, which is not the most impressive feat because the Lions only have one win. So, like, this team is so, like, inconsistent because you can depend on the Broncos to, like, get a bad win. Like, against the Jets, the Jets, they played all those teams this, this year. And they were undefeated, if you remember from a couple weeks. They were actually undefeated for a little bit of time, and now they're really sorry for all the stuff. So, I had the Bengals winning. I think the Bengals have a really solid team. They're going to be making a playoff push now. So, yeah. Josh? Oh, oh. oh no. I have the Bengals winning this game. Am I up? Because I have the Bengals winning this game uh, against the Broncos. Broncos did beat the Lions. It's the Lions, and no one's really expecting much from them. So give me the Cincinnati Bengals team with actual playoff hopes here. All right, our next matchup is the Buffalo Bills versus the Carolina Panthers. Jack. Unfortunately, I have to go with the Bills. Either no, I'm not happy with you. Imagine losing to Mac Jones, and he threw three times. Like not even like Mac Jones at his full power. Three times. That was all he needed to beat you guys. That's very disappointing. And then you guys had the issue with the Bucks, where you started to come back, you thought about it, and then you died. So very disappointed in you. But luckily, there's a team I'm even more disappointed in. That's the Carolina Panthers. They're a fun group. According to Matt Rule, Sam Darnold's coming back from IR, but apparently they plan to use all three QBs this week and just see what happens. That's always a good plan against Buffalo's pretty good defense. I guess they'll use a little bit of Sam Darnold, sprinkle in the cam, and then put in the P.J. Walker. We'll see. That sounds pretty messy to me, so there's no way I'm picking the Panthers probably for the rest of the year until they figure out which one of these three disasters is going to be their quarterbacks. 
But ultimately, Buffalo's do a bounce back, and they need it because they're almost at 500, and the AFC's pretty competitive. They could lose that spot in an instant. So I'm taking the Bills here. What are your thoughts, Josh? I'm going to make sure to make this tape short and sweet because I don't know when my thing is just going to go to one bar again. But I have the Buffalo Bills win here because, like Jack said, the Panthers have a revolving door at quarterback. I thought the Texans were going to be bad with their quarterback situation. At least they stuck with two. They just went, eh, whatever. We'll just throw all three of them out there and see how it works. They're just basically, pardon my language, they're throwing shit at a fan to see what sticks. So, uh, I'll go ahead and swallow it to Zach before I get us caught by YouTube again. Yeah. All right. I got the, uh, I got the Bills. Uh, the Panthers have been really bad since uh, their stretch of being undefeated with Sam Darnold. It's mostly because CMC is injured, but this is still no excuse for how bad they've been playing. And Matt Rule, with the weird wishbone system that he's running, is not going to work, okay? This isn't college. It's not going to work here. Starting three quarterbacks means that you have no idea as a head coach on who's good and who's not. So I'm not even dissing Matt Rule. It's he's a great head coach. It's just right now he is not being smart right now with his move of let's just start all three and see what happens against one of the best defenses in the league. Now we don't talk about that Patriots game or the Bills game, okay? Or, yeah, the Bucks game. Sorry about that. They are the Bills. Yeah. All right. Our next matchup is the Packers versus the Ravens. Josh. I gotta go with the Green Bay Packers here. They are looking really lethal while the Ravens are looking very inconsistent, just like every single AFC team this year. And the Packers, I believe, could be one of the teams representing the NFC if they can actually win the championship this year, unlike years prior. So I believe they're going to get another win here while the inconsistent Baltimore Ravens will just keep on twiddling their thumbs, wondering what the heck they're going to do with their season. Zach? I have Baltimore Ravens winning. I think that, uh, say if Lamar Jackson's high ankle sprain uh, isn't that bad, and he actually plays like he usually does, um, I think that the Packers won't be able to deal with this running game with Lamar Jackson and whoever they have at running back now. I think that this team is really good, and I think that they are going to beat the Green Bay Packers. Jack. I have to go with the Packers here. Now, the Ravens, I'll give you credit. You shouldn't have made it this far in the first place with all the injuries you've had, but I think it's finally just starting to catch up with the potential of losing Lamar and Marlon Humphrey. Everything is just piling on slowly but surely, and you got to meet up with one of the best teams in the NFL that is getting healthier as we speak. I don't think they have anyone to cover Devontae Adams. I think that's going to be an issue. I think if Lamar plays, they always have a chance when, when Lamar's in there, but if he doesn't, this should be a Packers W, but I'm going to flip a coin and say that Lamar probably isn't going to play, so Packers W. All right, our next matchup is the Philadelphia Eagles versus the Washington football team. I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. I'll go Eagles here. Tiebreaker here is the bye. Washington's a funny team. I, I never know what I'm going to get with Washington. Am I going to get a good team? Am I going to get a bad team? Or am I going to get an awful team? You just, you never know with them. And the Eagles, they have the, the bye. And I love teams that come off byes. Especially at home, they're going to get Jalen Hurts back potentially. I think Washington is going to have one of those bad days this weekend. And I think Philadelphia will get the job done here. What are your thoughts, Josh? What are your thoughts, I got to go with the new Minshew mania. The Philadelphia Eagles, well, it was against the Jets. Minshew showed a lot of good prowess there. Now, again, it was against the Jets, but I think that the Eagles will beat the football team here. Because the football team, the reason why they were even close in the Dallas game was because Dallas is good at choking leads. So, what did you do? You actually tried to win against Mike McCarthy, and you lost. You almost got blown out, too. So, I got to give it to the Philadelphia Eagles here. Zach? Going with the football team here, their defense is actually suffocating um, because I don't think that if Minshew is starting or Jalen Hurts, I don't feel like, especially Jalen Hurts coming off an injury, I don't think he's going to be able to deal with this Washington defense. So I have Washington beating 
the Philadelphia Eagles. Our next matchup is the Dallas Cowboys versus the New York Giants. Josh. I have to go with the Dallas Cowboys here. Well, they look pretty inconsistent against the football team. I think that the Giants are just in their own kind of, I guess, losing bubble here. They have the fourth and fifth fifth pick in this draft, so it's not going well for them. And they're just trying to get a higher and higher pick every single week. So I got to give it to the Cowboys here. We're actually looking pretty lethal in our, I think, one game back from being up there with some of the first seeds in the NFC. So, yeah, they're actually fighting for something while the Giants are just twiddling their thumbs waiting for the end of the season. So I'm going to hand this one off to Jack. I also have to go with the Cowboys here. The Giants, they're just sort of in this weird little period where we pretty much know Gettleman's going to get fired or apparently he's going to retire next year. Daniel Jones is and Joe Judge, pretty much both of them, are their futures are very unproven right now. We don't know if they're going to be Giants again. So basically it's everyone just trying to figure out what's going on. So they're just kind of lost. They don't know what's going to happen with their team and their future. And the Cowboys are looking to lock up an NFC East spot sooner than later and a playoff spot. I think they'll get the win here over the Giants, who are just sort of trying to do their thing. Hope for the season to end soon so they can fire everyone and try again. I'll take the Cowboys. What are your thoughts, Zach? I also have the Cowboys. You guys both didn't mention it, but in division opponents, they are actually undefeated against them. I think they're going to keep this going because they only they have not lost to one of their division opponents, so why would I doubt them now? So, yeah. Um, yeah, also they have an amazing offense. Like uh, Josh and Jack said, their Daniel Jones has an uncertain future. Gellman's <laughs> going to retire, and Joe Judge probably will get fired. Uh, it's a sad thing for Giants fans because you guys have been wasting Saquon Barkley's career, but eh, it's fine. You guys are under champagne. You guys had Eli Manning for most of the years. All right, our next matchup, it better be a blowout. It's the Arizona Cardinals versus the Detroit Lions. I have, I'm taking this one. I have the Cardinals. That Rams game was a just a fluke. They got a fluke win over us. And I believe that this Arizona team is going to be hungry. With no DeAndre Hopkins, we are going to step in to Ford Field and completely Burn the place down with how much we are to burning their corners. So, yeah, and I don't think that Detroit will be able to stop us in one drive. So, yeah. All right, Jack. I'm also going to go with the Cardinals here. Now, I understand they lost to the Rams last week, but I think that's just going to make them all very angry, and they're going to take out that anger on the Lions. Kyler Murray's going to have another big day, so all those people starting him in fantasy playoffs are probably going to be happy. And James Conner, I think Chase Edmonds comes back. So while well, DeAndre Hopkins is gone, they are getting some reinforcements back in, and they're pretty deep at receiver to begin with, so I don't think it will kill them, especially against the Lions. I think they'll take care of business here and get the win. What are your thoughts, Josh? I got to go with the Detroit Lions here because... Here's the thing. The Lions always have the Cardinals number, it seems. For the past couple of years, the Cardinals have always lost to the Lions. And you can't forget, Dan Campbell's men will literally jump off a cliff for him. He is just a locker room presence that is unmatched. So, do I think the Lions can win this game? Of course, and I'm going to choose the Lions here. Will it be good? No. Will it be very sloppy? Yes. Will it probably come down to some flu? Yes. But give me the Detroit Lions here to help us tell me when this new front will be going to the champion in the coming weeks or in the coming days. All right, our next matchup is the 49ers versus the Falcons. I'm going to hand... Actually, I'll just take this one again. Um, I have the Niners here. The Niners had a very good game against... They played last... Oh, they played against the Vikings. It was a really good shootout, and uh, they came out victorious. And I think that they are going to beat this Atlanta team because we all know that uh, Atlanta is not the best team. So, 
Yeah. All right. Uh, Jack. I'm gonna go Niners here. This is mainly because I don't trust the Falcons at all. I think they won against whatever the heck Carolina has become these last couple weeks. So that's not a statement at all. The fact that they were in Carolina was in that game is concerning in itself for the Falcons. But the Niners are led by a surging George Kittle and an army of running backs that include Elijah Mitchell and a little bit of Debo Samuel for some reason. And their defense is also picking it up. They're seven and six. They're looking to get a home W and try to truly assert themselves in this NFC playoff race and not clinch, but get at one step closer to securing the wild card spot. What are your thoughts, Josh? I have to go with the San Francisco 49ers here. Now, while they aren't going to be like they were last year where they were competing for the top of the division, but they have like multiple wins and everything, they are going to be competing for a wild card spot this year. And let's see. The Falcons, they're just the Falcons, so get used to this, Atlanta. You guys are back in. Good job that the Braves, the rest of your teams are. Kind of got to suck right now, so give me the San Francisco 49ers here. All right, our next matchup is the Seattle Seahawks versus the L.A. Rams. I'm going to take this one. I have the Seattle Seahawks beating the L.A. Rams. Now, the kitchen is open again. Russ is cooking again. It just took him a little bit to get the kitchen all up and running, but it is back. His uh, game against the Texans was amazing. And his last game, the uh, other game he played, amazing too. Those were chef's kiss. How, how good those games were. So I have the Seattle Seahawks beating the Rams. The Rams are a little bit cocky from beating the Cardinals. It's like, all right, we could actually get the first seed. And I think the Seattle team's going to surprise them. Gosh. Okay, I got the Los Angeles Rams winning. While the game looked close, because of Arizona's terrible clock management and going for on fourth down instead of kicking a field with Matt Prater, uh, they lost the game. So I think that the Rams will be winning here. And while some people may say, like, oh, what about that performance against the Texans? It's the Texans. Anyone looks good against the Texans. I need to see them against an actual team. So I'm going to choose the Rams here, who are the safer option. And... Let's go Rams, and they're going to get another win to get them one step closer to the NFC West first. Jack? I'm also going to have to go with the Rams here. They got a big win over Arizona to stay in the division race, and while Russ is turning it back on, I think he's going to be able to keep them in it offensively. I think the Rams are going to get some people off the COVID list. I think they're feeling themselves. I think they'll get another big W at home over a division rival. All right, our next matchup is the New Orleans Saints versus the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm going to hand this one off to Josh. Did you hand it off to me? Yes. Okay, so I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers winning here. The Saints are just, well, the Saints. I think Taysom will rush for a lot of yards. Kamara will rush for a lot of yards. And... It'll be a game by the Saints, but the Bucks are just going to win it today, so give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers here. Uh, Jack? I also have to go with the Bucks here. As much as I love to see a big Saints upset, like that seems to always happen, I think eventually Tom Brady has to learn to beat them in the regular season. This will be the most undermanned their squad has ever been against them. They were even more, and they're more injured this time around than they were before. I think this is finally the one where Tom Brady overcomes his demons and he beats the New Orleans Scene Saints in the regular season for the first time ever as a Buccaneer. What are your thoughts, Zach? Nope, that's not happening. The Saints are beating the Bucks. The Saints have always beat the Bucks when Tom Brady has been there. And it was not even because of Jameis Winston. It was because of a guy named Trevor Simeon. Okay, so we already have to take that into account. He lost to the backup to the backup, okay? So, like, I don't trust Tom Brady to beat, um, like, <laughs> the Saints anytime. So, I got the New Orleans Saints winning, and that makes the Cardinals the first seed again. 
I, I didn't do it just because of bias. I actually do believe this stuff. Uh, and then the last matchup of today is a really bad one for Monday night, and it's underwhelming. It's the Minnesota Vikings versus the Chicago Bears. Jack. I'm going to have to go with the Vikings here. Now, I understand I'm not a big Vikings fan. Well, yeah, I do like I really like the Vikings, but I hate them at the same time because of what they do. That was one heck of a ride I had to watch on Thursday night. They're very confusing. They're very inconsistent. But I think this time around, they're going to be able to get the job done. Well, Chicago hung in there the first half with Green Bay on Sunday Night Football. They were dancing. Matt Nagy was celebrating. We did it. We were in a game with the Packers. Aaron Rodgers responded by exploding on them for like 400 yards and three touchdowns. I think the Vikings have the offensive firepower to do this similar thing without the weird first half slump that the Packers had. I think they'll take care of it. They'll get the W. I'm going to take the Vikings to win a game for once. What are your thoughts, Zach? Uh, I have the Minnesota Vikings beating the Chicago Bears because this Vikings team does play inconsistent, like Jack said, but the Vikings are actually fighting for something, and the Bears are fighting for something too, but they're completely opposite. The Vikings are fighting for a playoff shot. The Bears are fighting for the first pick. It's not going well for them either. So, there's like a disconnect there, but eh, who cares. Um... Yeah, I have the Vikings there. Um, if they win, they get probably the eighth seed if all my stuff is right. So, yeah. Josh. I have to go with the Chicago Bears here. While I do believe the Vikings will put up a good fight, I just have to look back to the Steelers game to know what the Vikings are going to do and what Nagy is going to capitalize on, which is choking. And I think that... While the Bears did choke, they choked against the Packers. That is a formidable vote. While the Steelers are a dumpster fire, which that game should have never been that close. So, give me the Chicago Bears winning this game here. Alright. Does that for our video today? If you liked it... Oh, sorry about that. If you liked it, uh, hit the like button. I think they're removing dislikes, so just hit the dislike. If it's still there, if you didn't like the video, uh, comment below if you think any of my takes, Josh's takes, or Jack's takes are dumb. Just be nice about it. And Jack, hit the plugs. As always, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Right there, Frontline FB. I'll leave the links in the description. As always, hope you enjoyed this week of predictions. This is an interesting group of matchups here. We'll see you guys back here next week for more. And one more thing, right before, don't forget, uh, let's see, go China Springs, uh, go Deuce for Heisman, and we got a new trophy, yeah, for whoever wins predictions, so whoever wins predictions will get this, I need to hand this off to Jack, because he is this week's prediction winner, I was the week before, but this is the trophy, what should we call it, sorry about interrupting the final in outro, thank you for watching, and Go, Frontline Football.